So I've been using this Mac for over a week now to do all my engineering work. So the design analysis, I didn't have another laptop at the time, so I really had no choice. So how did I go using this Mac in an engineering sense? Well, first up, you do need to use a virtual machine, like I was saying earlier, and I was using Parallels, and it's been worked really well. I haven't seen any hiccups with any of the software other than a couple of minor things. So I was able to use Bluebeam effectively. I was able to use RAM Concept, which I use extensively, and I can even use eTabs to do that more complex analysis. I was able to do multiple things at once. Sometimes, like when it was on the Windows PC, if I was doing a more complex analysis such as eTab, it would slow down the computer too much. Now, was that because of how powerful the M1 Mac is? Or was that because I could virtual machine it out? I don't know, but it was definitely processing a lot faster. The other one thing that I was finding as well, the analysis would come up quicker, where if I was running on a PC, it would slow down in processing time, especially that end constraint. And when I was just finalizing and getting the results out, it seemed a lot quicker and snappier. Let's go to something a bit more 3D to show you the real power of this. So let's go up to our standard mesh. We can see we're snapping through our standard mesh, we're zoom in and out, and now if we go to our 3D's perspective, we can see we've got a big building in here. So even on the big models, it wasn't too bad. So if we go through, we can see that we've got our whole structure a complex with beams, and we're able to analyze this. Even if we go through a quick assessment, we don't want to regenerate the mesh as it's already generated, we can just hit continue and calculate. And you see, it's actually running the software. It's analyzing things. I was actually able to effectively use this to do all this. So now look, as we're analyzing something, let's go and cross and jump into something a bit more complex. Let's jump into a 3D model in eTabs. But look, we're running analysis software in the background, yet we're still able to effectively spin around the eTabs model. So even a more complex software like this was still running effectively and getting the results out that I need. So how about another software as well? So we've got this running in the background. We'll hit run again for this one. We'll break the model. We'll delete the results. And then we'll hit run. So now we've got eTabs running. We can go back and we can see that RAM concept is still running. Now let's even go across to Bluebeam. Now this is now a trial version now because I've used it for a little while. But we can see we can even open up Bluebeam and still effectively work through the different things that we're doing. So we're running multiple bits of software. A few minutes later. So let's go back to the analysis that was actually running. Now this is actually completed in the Mac. So we can actually see that we can actually get results out of this now. So if we go back to some of the analysis results, we'll have a look back here. Now mind you, not only was I running two analysis software, I was also running OBS recording the whole thing, which you're able to see views of. So go to our standard deflection plan, we can see it's run. Now let's go across to our eTabs model. And we can see that we can move this around. Spinning around, you see there's really no latency. It's really quick. Let's have a look at something a bit more fancy. Let's look at our modes. We can see it's moving across. Now let's see if we can animate that as well. We can see that we're actually even animating the reviews. So most of the functions, if not all the functions so far that I've used in eTabs have actually been functional as well. So if I'm using Bentley software, the Bluebeam, or even eTabs, it's really effective and doesn't really slow me down. It actually have more power than the PCs that I was using before. So this is really quite impressive, especially when you think about it. This is not only running multiple software at the same time, it's also running it in a virtual machine. So it's really impressive, the power of the M1 Mac. Now this brings us perfectly into the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Do you have a specific skill you want to learn? Whether that be leadership, communication, even some hard skills like engineering. There's even more classes there for you. And Skillshare is a perfect place to start that learning. They offer a platform which is ad-free and there's new content launched weekly. So you can stay in the zone while learning those new skills. The one thing I enjoy about Skillshare is the fact that I can learn on the go. So I'm currently based here in India, but I can still keep learning through Skillshare. For example, I've been taking this class called the Creative Leadership Toolkit, which helps improve my leadership ability. So I can keep learning even on the go, no matter where I am in the world. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. I hope to see you over there. Now let's keep learning. So where was some of the letdowns? Well, 
The hardest thing I had to come across, and especially coming from a Windows machine, is the shortcut keys. So typically when I'm copying something, it's Control C, Control V, I, I can Alt tab out of things. I can print screen. So if I'm trying to do the snips, it was really easy. But this is where I had to really change my mind and some of the shortcut keys are actually a little bit different. So instead of Control C, Control V, you've got Alt C, Alt V to copy things out. So if you wouldn't want to print screen, you've got a command to it, but it's a little bit tricky. So it's Control Alt Shift 4. Now what this allows me to do is highlight a piece of the screen and they'll directly copy it to the clipboard. So it makes some of those shortcut keys even faster. Now, having to pick up all those things was a little bit troublesome and always found myself going back to the old ways, but I slowly picked up over time. But one thing that I did find that was a little bit of a drawback was in Bluebeam. So typically I was mostly using shortcut keys in Bluebeam. Now most of them worked. However, there was one clash and that's that command V. So what command V does in Bluebeam, it helps you resize those text boxes, which is really handy. However, as it was in a Macintosh, that would undo things. Some of those shortcut keys, if they were on a Mac and on the Windows, the Mac will override them, so it won't let you do those shortcut keys. So it was a little bit of a letdown, but it wasn't too bad. Most of the time it was effective and I didn't really see any slowdown and it was really helping out. So where did I see some of the benefits as well? Well, on the Mac, I could run it either on or off power and have a long battery life, pretty much all day. As opposed to the Windows machine, if I unplug it and run it, it'll not only slow down, but also run out of the battery really quickly. So that was really quite surprising that I could actually effectively use this and not have any problems and be able to use it away from the desk just as effectively as being in the desk. Will I still be using the Macintosh in the future? Well, I did grow to love it and the power that it gave me was really amazing. So yes, I would probably use it into the future. However, I will probably tag team it with a Windows laptop as I will have sometimes software that may be hard to process across. But I really had no problem in the setting that I was using it in. One thing I would recommend is picking up things like a mouse that I effectively use there and a keyboard as well. Both of these are compatible with your Mac and your PC. And the great thing about them is they've got different settings so it allows you to change between them. So I can use both of them and not need to have to repair every single time. But this is really quite a surprising feature. So I think next up, I'll do another video where I compare this to the Dell and see what the differences are. And can they stack up? Can the top of the line Windows PC that most people would probably choose beat this beast of the machine Mac? If you want to see that, you have to subscribe as it is coming up into the future. You're trying to work out whether you want to pick up the Mac or the Windows PC, but you're obviously in the engineering field. And if you're interested in structural engineering, I've got a link of a video here about something about structural engineering that will make you into a better engineer. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either do this through a link in the description to my Patreon page or become a YouTube member. Without the support of my YouTube members and patrons, this type of content will not be possible. As always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.